Good morning, guys. We're starting out with really pretty sunshine in Springfield. Just a few serious clouds out there to 61 degrees with some southerly winds at 7 miles per hour. We've got temperatures at 61 degrees in Mountain Grove, 60 in West Plains, 62 in Eva, and 57 degrees in Branson. Dew points are in the upper 50s, so if we look at the muggy meter, um, we're still pretty comfortable. It's really nice and pleasant out there this morning. It might feel a little bit sticky out there today. Some dew points could get over 60. Um, but we're really not expecting anything terribly humid. It should be nice out there today. So dry roads, if you need to head out, we'll have some green light conditions, no weather hazards. If you're going to fire up the grill today, it's going to be a really nice day to do it. Sunshine and 85 degrees by this afternoon, clear skies through the evening. So really nice and quiet on future cast today. A couple of clouds tonight, maybe a little bit muggier with those lows in the middle 60s. By tomorrow, a couple of spotty showers and storms will be possible with highs in the middle 80s. Then we could find a line of storms diving south into the evening hours capable of damaging winds and large hail. So severe risk come back, comes back for tomorrow um, with, again, the potential for damaging winds and large hail. We could find an isolated strong storm or two again by Thursday. So today's that a really nice day, a little bit unsettled by the end of the week with some chances of showers and storms Wednesday, Thursday and into Friday. Um, we're a little bit unsettled there. We could find some strong and severe winds by late Wednesday. Then we're feeling summery by the weekend. We could find some heat index values getting into the 90s. Look at these temperatures. Our average for this time of year is 80 degrees. We're in the middle 80s through the end of the week, and then we could be hitting our first 90 degree temperatures of the year. Joe, Jen. Elisa, thanks. Color 10 is your local election headquarters. Green County says it's taking additional precautionary measures to help ensure the health and safety of citizens voting in today's general municipal election. Color 10's Nigel McDonald is live this morning to explain more on what's being done. Nigel, good morning. Well, good morning, Jen. Yes, polling locations are open and will remain open until 7 p.m. this evening. Now, I'm joined with Shane Scholler of Greene County. Good morning. Good morning. Now, I know when I walked in, I noticed a few things that I hadn't noticed before. So talk about some of those additional um, precautionary measures. Absolutely. Well, we're just building on the measures that we had back during the March 10th election. So we're going to continue to have the hard surface cleaners. We've also got someone who's designated to be cleaning throughout the day. They're going to be going through cleaning the door handles as you come in. They're going to be cleaning the voting services that you're voting on. We've also provided these pens right here today that voters will use. They'll be able to drop it in a bucket. We'll re-sanitize them, and then they'll be available again. Of course, I'm not wearing for any of you, but um, we'll be we have election judges be wearing this throughout the day. And then I don't know if you can see in the backdrop, we got the plexiglass up. Yeah, and so, <laughs> you know, if you have that accidental sneeze from election judge or a voter, it's going to protect both of them in those instances. And so we just wanted to be ready. Um, of course, we have the night trial gloves if they want to wear the glove. And then we also encourage your voter, bring your own pen if you so choose. If that is something that you want to bring with you, bring your own hand sanitizer. We'll have that here, but we encourage voters to be prepared too. And I also noticed, um, the markings on the floor is that to add for the social distancing exactly just a reminder kind of give voters that you know six feet so that they don't have an issue now if you come in as a couple you'll be able to remain as a couple as you come in to vote that day but that's just to try to help people um, keep people that six feet apart sure and so um, with no Springfield issues on the ballot um, today can you talk about maybe expected voter turnout for Greene County well and there's actually no issues on any of the ballots so it's can candidates only so we anticipate about a six to eight percent turnout that's kind of historically been what you see when you don't have issues on the battle and count candidates only so hopefully um, we'll get a higher turnout than that but that's been what the past uh, turnout has been when we have candidates only well, thank you for joining us yeah, this absolutely. morning. As Shane mentioned, the polling locations, um, you'll expect, you know, those additional safety precautionary measures um, as you head out to the polls. Again, they are open now and will remain open until 7 p.m. this evening. Reporting live from Springfield, Nigel McDonald, Ozarks First. Good to see the safety there this morning. Thank you, Nija. Important to note in today's elections, as you just heard, Springfield residents have no issues or races there, but voters across Ozark will be making decisions on taxes, school bonds, and local leadership. There are a few things to mention. In Ozark, 
Voters will decide on a school bond, one that won't increase taxes. Ozark voters will also decide on a used tax for online purchases. Voters in Taney County will also decide on a sales tax increase for law enforcement and a tax levy for the Western Taney County Fire Protection District. Voters in Camdenton's school district will be asked if they want to be annexed into Ozark's Technical Community College's tax district. And once polls close at 7, head on over to OzarksFirst.com for up-to-date results from all of our counties and, of course, the full coverage coming up tonight at 9 and 10. Some news that came in overnight from around the region. Four police officers were shot in downtown St. Louis overnight amid ongoing violent protests. The shooting happened near St. Louis Police Headquarters, where a group of protesters and police had been clashing repeatedly throughout the night. So some, some coward fired shots at officers, and, and now we have four in the hospital. But thankfully, and, and thank God, they're alive. They're alive. But I... I you, you, <laughs> Can we make some sense out of this? Chief Hayden says the injuries are not believed to be life threatening. Demonstrations began peacefully yesterday in Kansas City, but also became violent as the night went on. The protests were not planned, just like the ones that took place over the weekend. One group marched while another stayed near the plaza. As the two groups joined up near the plaza eventually, police say people in the crowd started throwing objects and officers had to deploy tear gas. The people who are here to be negative and to just loot and steal, go home. You're not here to fight. If you're not with the movement, tell us so we don't have to worry about y'all. Y'all can kick rocks. If you're not here to fight for our lives, if you're not here to fight for your life, then you don't need to be here. About 20 people were placed into custody overnight from this. News from around the nation now. Information continues to come in about two shootings in Las Vegas. An officer was shot in the head at the Circus Circus Hotel and Casino. In a separate shooting at the federal courthouse, officers fired at a suspect who fired a shot at the courthouse. The suspect was hit several times. There is no word right now on his condition. A day of peaceful protest in Buffalo, New York, turned violent late overnight. Police were lined up in front of E-District Police Headquarters when an SUV crashed into them. A Buffalo police officer and a New York State trooper were struck down by a vehicle, too. Both were taken to a medical center and are listed in stable condition. The drivers and the passengers in the car were immediately taken into police custody. Also, the Richmond, Virginia Police Department says two officers and one suspect are in the hospital following a shooting early this morning. Officers were responding to a report of an armed person there. When they arrived, officers reported hearing gunfire from two blocks away. While investigating, two more people were shot. They returned fire, hitting the suspect. A spokesperson for the department says the two officers and suspect were taken to the hospital there. Two additional suspects were detained for questioning. In medical coverage, with a small spike in COVID-19 cases in Greene County, the health department's contact tracers say they are busy making phone calls. If you or someone you know tested positive for the virus, you were likely contacted by one of the county's contact tracers. They are the ones who call everyone you know that you might have been in close contact with and possibly exposed. While there are some private contact tracers, the ones in Greene County are all employees with the health department. They've been trained to walk through questions about your symptoms, where you have been, if you have been close to who you have been in contact with, and will also call for testing. They will likely also ask you to quarantine as well. John Mooney, the assistant director for of health at the Springfield Greene County Health Department says being able to recall where you've been and when is a big help. Really, anytime you have a communicable disease, the whole goal of public health is to get ahead of that disease and to stop that, that transmission. So contact tracers are a huge piece of that, of being able to, to contain the virus. I think the more that we can um, accurately be able to recall where we've been, especially when we do more high-risk activities, but the more that we're conscious about how we move through the community and make sure that we do it in a safe way. There are 57 active cases of COVID-19 in Greene County, with over 150 cases total. The county says it has completed over 10,000 tests. Let's take a look at what's coming up for you on CBS This Morning. Coming up, officials rule George Floyd's death a homicide, how his family members are continuing their quest for justice. Plus, we go behind the scenes with one of New York City's police chiefs as the NYPD responds to the protests. Coming up on CBS This Morning. 
All right, we take a look at uh, one thing trending right now that you may not have seen uh, from earlier this morning, but as you get online, it is Blackout Tuesday. Actually, something uh, started up by the music industry. A lot of big time record labels, music labels, are going to take time out of their day, and musicians will take time to uh, recognize police brutality that's been going on against, uh, against other races in America. What are some of the things they're doing? You say take time. Uh, Does the, it explain exactly? They'll join in on protests. They'll have ah, a, just a lot of big name musicians are going to be there okay. to be able to do that. Uh, you've seen some people speak out on social media. You'll see a lot of people at protests today. Those mm -hmm. will continue on into the day today. Yeah, artists have big platforms, so using some of that for what they believe in and bringing fans together, I think, is a good idea as they... Certainly. They use that. Something to watch out for and that you might notice today. One last look at our forecast, too. Pretty sunny out there and pretty nice, right? Yeah, pretty similar to yesterday. Um, 85 degrees with the sunshine. Storm chances, though, come back starting tomorrow. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us here on Daybreak. We'll see you back here with more news soon.